I'm showing you how to make a fabric bowl cosy. This is uh, super easy. It's a, it's a great beginner sewing project. The important thing is choosing the right materials to work with. So this is 100% cotton fabric with a cotton uh, wadding or padding for quilts, whatever. It's, it's all 100% cotton, including the thread I'm working with. And the reason for that is if you put your fabric bowl cosy in the microwave, you don't want any polyester or any other synthetic fibres melting because that would be disastrous. So here I am marking out quilting lines on a square. This is a 10 inch square and I am going to sew across diagonally corner to corner and then from middle to middle along the sides to hold the wadding in place. So I've got two 10 inch squares of 100% cotton fabric and one of wadding. Just going to pin that in place before I stitch. Excuse the top of my head. One day I might need a video without it. So I'm stitching with a 2.4, 2.6 stitch length uh, with a regular needle, uh, etc. No need for a quilting foot just for this small amount. You can make different sizes and I'll link to a blog post below in the description which will have printable pattern pieces if you want, want them. But this is perfectly easy to do with a quilter's ruler in terms of measuring out. Um, and there are three different sizes on the blog post. So as I say, I'm just quilting the wadding to the cotton fabric. And once I've done that, we'll add some shape to it. So this will fit a standard soup bowl. It's the most commonly made size of fabric bowl cosy. So now we've quilted that together, we're going to add some darts. So you're going to fold your fabric right sides together and you're going to mark two inches in along the fold and one, one inch on the side edge also from the fold. So you're creating some diagonals, just going to mark that so it's easy to see for stitching. I'm going to sew that making sure I back stitch at each end of that dart just to stop it on unraveling. Now I'm going to trim that and we're going to open the fabric out and we're going to fold it the other way just lining up those darts there just going to pin them in place and then I'm going to repeat the process and mark two by one. You can change the size of the dart depending upon the depth of your bowl. Um, that bottom folded line from the edge of the dart to the edge of the dart is going to be the width of the base of the bowl. So I've sewn those. Just give it a trim. So that's one side of the bowl cosy made. Next we're going to repeat the process with a second fabric. So I've marked some darts, I've sewn them, trimming them. Now I'm going to open out fabric, refold, lining up those darts, remark the fabric. And then I'll sew these darts in place too. Once you've uh, made one or two, you'll find this a really quick and easy project. And fabric bowl cases make a lovely handmade gift for people. You can use them uh, for hot dishes, but you can also use them for cold, really cold bowl of ice cream. I use um, noodle sized bowls frequently in the microwave for vegetables for one from the freezer. I don't bother boiling a pan if it's just some sweet corn for one person in the family. So these are perfect for that. So you've got your two pieces of fabric, you're going to place them right sides together, you're going to line up those darts first and then your corners should fall into place. Your corners make a handy um, bit of fabric to gather in your hands as you take the dish out of the microwave. Now I'm going to line up those points. Now if you want 
you can make hanging loops. So I'm going to demonstrate doing that, but it's totally up to you and how you envisage storing the bowl cozies. Personally, mine are probably just going to go in my tea towel drawer, to be honest. Um, but it's always good to see the option, isn't it? So let's pull that aside. So I've got a piece of fabric, one and a half by three inches. I've folded it in half, pressed, opened out, folded the raw edges in to that crease line, pressed, opened out and then folded it all in together. So all the raw edges are encased. And I um, top stitched this both sides, folded in half. And as you can see, I'm pinning into place on one of the corners of the fabric bowl cozy. And I basted that before this next step, which was to machine stitch round the top of the bowl cozy with a quarter of an inch seam allowance allowing a two inch turning gap along one of the edges so i'm just trimming the seam allowance having done that so that i can turn the bowl cozy the right side out through that turning gap and i'm just trimming the excess seam allowance some people put two two layers of wadding padding in um, but that just adds bulk and makes it a little bit harder to turn through. So I'm turning through and I'm going to push out those corner points to make it as professional as possible. So quite a lot of people use, um, new, I've forgotten the word, chopsticks, that's the word, for turning your corners out. I use this, but I'm really careful. I don't, oh, I don't want to um, snap any stitches by accident. So now we've got a turning gap, we're going to give that a really good press all the way around and pin that turning gap in place and then we're going to top stitch to finish the ball cosy. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed.